Today, we're gonna to be talking about can your boots be resold? So we are joined again today by a good friend of ours, Nick from Stridewise. Thank you very much. No, it's really, it's really good to be here. Like I, I spend so much time obsessing over boots and everything uh, up in New York City and uh, to actually be around guys who actually work with boots and resold them and like know all these brands have really intimate knowledge of them all um i think it's, it's 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 wonderful well it's definitely fun to have other shoe and boot guys that talk a lot about the same subjects that we do and be able to just discuss it and maybe cover topics that you know we didn't think about and maybe you have knowledge of so hopefully that's what we'll do today so the first one i really wanted your help clarifying um because you still hear conflicting stuff about this uh cemented construction probably the most basic type of uh, method of attaching an upper to a stall, yeah. uh, can, can it ever be resold? Generally, a cement constructed boot, and you can give your opinion, I think is harder to resole. Yeah. Um, they usually are made a little bit more inferior type of products uh, or, or materials. Generally, if it is a welted boot, it's just cement, you know, it's just glued on there. Uh, when you try to you know, resole it, the welts just rip off too. And can actually rip off the bottom of the upper that's tucked yeah. up underneath. It can rip part of that along the seam um, just because it's not like it's a stitched on sole. It is bonded to the upper and you're mm -hmm. ripping it apart. Yeah. So it a can actually do damage to try to resole a cemented. Yeah. A lot of hiking boots or boots that we see, a lot of not only hiking boots, but uh, more like construction type boots where molded it has a sole. molded sole on it, a real rugged molded sole. And when I say molded sole, I'm talking where it kind of, you can see the outsole and it kind of has its own little design to it from the company. All of that is glued on with a special machine at that shop that pushes it on there. And you just can't buy replacement soles for those. So I generally tend to tell folks, you can resole some cemented boots if it's more of a flat bottom but especially if it has a contoured sole i would say no i've heard i've heard of like they'll have a sneaker uh, sole and they'll have worn down on the heel a bit and worn down a bit on the toe but instead of resoling it some cobblers will like just like cut across the whole thing cutting off the worn down part and then like kind of gluing another one on you the can bottom. so it's it, like resoling but it's like half yeah re so yeah. i'm not and again i guess when we resole things i like to put it back the way it kind of came from the factory because I know exactly what you're talking about. Some cobblers will try to uh, rig it, rig things, which is kind of like that. You know, if you're having to sand, you know, s slice it in order to make it flat and then you're putting on another sole, you're, you just risk that coming apart. And I've heard too many stories where cobblers have done that. And then I'll read down below and somebody's like, oh, I had these resold two months ago and it's already pulling off. I mean, you kind of get what you pay for. And when in the boot world, Cement constructed is the absolute bottom generally. Um, and I know that may hurt some feelings, but it is what it is. Uh, I mean, you can get stitched on soles starting around $200. Especially so, if you're talking about a hiking boot. I mean, you yeah. don't want to be up on the Appalachian Trail and then it comes unglued. And we've uh, had that happen. Yeah, which we've had guys and they carry duct tape in their bag for that very purpose. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, and there's also like bond, I, I, my Timberland premium waterproof boots, they call it bond welted, but that's, that's just cemented as well. Isn't yeah, it? the welt yeah. isn't stitched on, it's just cemented to the shoe as well, so. What about like, I know most sneakers are cemented construction, but then there's like some stitched ones, like Cone Projects and uh, um, Koyo and stuff, they're, yeah. they're, they're stitched on. A lot of those can be. Um, you just gotta find somebody yeah. who can- Not every cobbler resoles it, because you do have to find the source of the materials that to be able to resole those uh, so it's not something that we deal with but i do know there are co you know cobblers throughout the u.s and overseas that some of focus. them focus on sneakers and some of those can yeah. be resold they're also often like stitched and glued these sneakers right. like I'm, I'm pretty sure common projects in koyo are so it's like it's easy to resole but it'd be a lot easier if they wasn't glued yeah they're generally glued on the bottom and then stitched around the side uh the next one blake stitch blake stitch please actually hang on we go in here Nice, very, very lightweight. Blake stitching is when the upper is sewn directly to the sole. The upper is pulled up underneath, glued down, sanded down to where it's actually sanding it smooth, and then you stick on a sole and stitch it. And the needle stitching it goes all the way through the shoe onto your insole. Can so you're standing on the stitches. Can it be resold? It can be resold. Um, the only thing about Blake stitch shoes is that you can only resole it an, a limited number of times because every time that you stitch it, it comes up through the insole and it's poking a hole. Uh, it's almost impossible to ever restitch it 
and find those exact holes. So, you know, after, after a while, it almost becomes like Swiss cheese. And once you get too many stitch holes in it, the insole is kind of shot. So at that point, you know, but generally you can resole them around, you know, three, three, four times maybe. Really? If you're lucky. It sounds so. like if you're going, if, if, you, if, you're doing, if you're risking that Swiss cheese thing, it feels like you would only be able to resole like once or twice before it just it kind of It depends shreds. on the shoe and it depends yeah. on the quality of leather that the upper's made out yeah. of. Okay. Um, and also the insole, if you get a Blake Stitch shoe that the insole is actual vegetable tan, uh, leather, you, it's going to last a lot longer versus if it's like a like fiber, a fiber board. board insole, which yeah. a lot of Blake Stitch shoes use that fiber board. And those um, are the ones that tend to run out, you know, yeah. in the They'll lifespan. Start to crumble. What about uh, the Blake Rapid construction? For a long time, uh, well not that long, but I, I, kind of, I kind of thought they were the same thing. Um, or like if you were getting a resolable Blake Stitch, that's actually Blake Rapid. But that's not the case. The construction is like quite different. The, the midsole and outsole is stitched together with a Blake Rapid, which is different to Blake Stitch. Is, well, is it's right? a hybrid between yeah. uh, and kind of a, a Goodyear welt, or should we say an outsole stitch, and uh, a Blake Stitch. So basically you will have a midsole or the insole itself um, that will be stitched to the upper uh, using the, the insole, yeah. and then you can use the midsole that sticks out the side to serve almost as a welt and then it'll actually stitch on an outsole to the um, to that. The good part about having a Blake Rapid, and you'll see this a lot of times on like really high-end loafers, mm -hmm. um, is when you resole the shoe, unlike a Blake stitch where you can only stitch it so many times, a Blake Rapid, you're basically stitching that midsole on there one time, and then you're using the outside of that midsole as kind of a Goodyear welt. So when you resole it, you're just cutting the stitches on the outside, pulling it off, never touching the stitches from the, uh, the midsole. And then when you re-glue the new sole, you're just stitching the outside. So you're not ever wearing or punching holes into the inside like you do a blank stitch. And if, if you sense. ever so. needed to, you know, like for instance, you've had them resold multiple times and every time you get them, it sands down, gets closer to the stitches. If you ever wear down on that, then you can Blake stitch a new one on there, and then you're back to multiple. Yep. So next one, we've done three: Blake stitch, Blake rapid, and cemented. Goodyear welt. Can you restore a Goodyear welt, guys? Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Goodyear cool. welt is the kind of the tried and true. It's what um, it's kind of the the gold standard yeah. for yeah. shoes. Uh, well, at least we say that um, that's what most people are familiar with. Especially with boots versus like yeah. dress shoes. Also, when you wear that welt out, a shoe cobbler or the factory can just put another welt back on and now you're starting fresh. So as long as you're taking care of your uppers and not ever letting your uppers wear out, um, then you can just stitch on a new, year good, a new Goodyear welt and just keep on going. So it's, it's a shoe or a boot you could literally keep for a decade or more. Most of your, your welts are going to be made out of leather, vegetable tan leather. That's, your, that's what you want to strive for. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're made out of rubber sometimes they they're made out of um, some type you know, of other synthetic material yeah, synthetic material or a fiber board i mean not fiber board but a uh, leather board um, but it, if you're going to get one get one that's vegetable tan leather they're going to last a lot longer and yeah yeah that's fair so uh the ones you can resolve we've been talking about so far and i also want to quickly mention another type of goodyear welt so just in case you get confused when you see this terminology uh there are still sort of a storm welt this is a split reverse welt, but storm welts and split reverse welts, they're just Goodyear welts that are more yes. water resistant. Yeah, so Goodyear welt is technically a process. Um, we just kind of give that term to a welt that's stitched on in the same method. But a storm welt or a um, split reverse storm welt, they're just, instead of being flat, they just have a little wall that hugs up against the upper. Which is kind of what gives it that when they say waterproof, you know, it just kind of goes up, flips up the It's always water to, resistant. It's water resistant. Yeah, exactly. You have to, you have to yes, kind of yes, technically yes, say, resistant. like don't stand in a lake fishing in a You're gonna get water, water down in there. Yeah. But it's, it's still, it, because you have that lift coming onto the upper, it, it's still more, more water resistant than a good gel. Exactly. Which is already very, very water resistant, but uh, this is a, a little bit more. Um, and also like it helps, it, it stops like 
dirt from getting onto the stitches, which yep. can like yep. theoretically uh, improve the longevity of it like a, a little bit. Yeah. You know? yeah, and they come in different styles. Uh, some storm welts have a rounded wall. Some of them just kind of have like a 90 degree flat. Yeah. Do you guys work with hand welts? I wanted to mention hand welts really quickly. That's like, it's like a good year welt, but done by hand and much more difficult. Yes, so it's the same kind of basic idea behind a Goodyear welt, except uh, instead of a machine that is uh, stitching the welt on, it is the, the, your welt is actually stitched on by hand. It's just a guy in there with an awl, poking a hole, sticking needles through, and they're stitching it on by hand. That's the whole idea behind hand welts, um, is it's, it's stitched on by hand. Now we use... Um, it generally doesn't have as deep of a cavity either. Yes, now we are stitching it on to a Goodyear welted rim, uh, I mean rib, but uh, a lot of times what you'll see on a hand welted is the rib is actually carved into the leather instead of a canvas raised rib going around. It's actually stitched straight into um, into the insole. So it's, it's, you will get a lot of these on a lot of um, old school cowboy boots. Yeah. Or, uh, see them sometimes on Luke Casey boots. Yeah, like yeah we'll get some on anything that's going to be bespoke. Yeah. It's going to be. Yeah, uh, a lot of Japanese boots are, are hand welded mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. But yeah, absolutely, those can definitely be reasonable. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's harder, right? Like if you go to any cobbler, because any cobbler will do like a, a good year weld. That's like the gold standard of resellability. Mm -hmm. If you go to a cobbler with a hand welted boot, and you're like, hey man, can you resell it? She's like, you, you give me like a day of work. I don't have this kind of this kind of skill. Not that they're unskilled, but you know, it's a it's a much bigger job, is it not, to resell a hand? It's more it? labor intensive. Stitch down is very very popular. This is a Truman boot here. Uh, also, Viberg is a very very fancy boot company um, that they do mostly, al almost entirely stitch down, not all of them. Uh, and that's not a good year welt. And many people will often say it's much harder to resell. And some people say it can't be resold. And some people say it can be resold perfectly easily. Um, this is the one I need the most help on. Yeah, you can restole, resole a stitch down. Uh, we've done it numerous times. The only difference or the hard part I would say about a stitch down as opposed to like Goodyear welt or another type of welt is because this leather, you're using the upper leather. So it comes over and it just flips out. Yeah. And when you remove that sole, if you're not careful, the the wet or the the upper of the shoe has that tendency to just want to pop out so you you have to be careful that you're maintaining the shape of that boot or shoe um so that you can put it back exactly where it was yeah. i would say that's one of the more difficult parts about it yeah, doesn't it i've had people say like every time they get a, a stitch down boot resold um the leather gets sort of like pulled a bit further and further yeah. out as they it find can. it. It's very easy to lose its shape especially if you think like a um a clark's desert chuck a boot um, when you cut that off, especially when you cut the midsole, it just opens up like a can of biscuits and it's just, I mean, you can practically wad the upper up. It loses its shape. And one of the other things that I don't really like about stitch down construction and, you know, you just have to be careful is with a welt, you know, we always have to somewhat sand this off to make it smooth. Um, if you're doing it right and correctly, you know, you shouldn't eat into that much at all but you, you you have to be careful that when you sand it you know you're taking away or you can possibly take away you know from this leather right here um, and it only shrinks it in and then you don't have much room to stitch it if you're resoling it you you, you have to you're stitching it through the the same bit of leather right like you have to like make sure you're missing the holes from the previous uh attachment. it's easy yeah so it's easier to see i think where the original holes were um you can kind of set your machine beforehand um, and it's almost like redoing a Goodyear well. It's easier to flip the shoe up before you put sole on, kind of gauge where that uh, the original holes were. It, it can last a little longer than a, than a Blake stitch as far as the holes go, but. I've got five bags, I just spent 700 bucks on them. Can I resole them? Almost definitely like twice you can get it resold or something. Yes, right? but yeah. that, I think that's also why Vibergs are built so well yeah. i mean they're I mean, and most they're of them have really rock. thick rubber soles so you're not going to burn through those rubber soles nearly as quickly as you are if you have leather soles yeah. so they're, they're, these are usually the type of shoes that, that you're gonna they're gonna last you a lifetime you know if you get them resold they'll definitely last you a lifetime and you'll hand them off to the next generation the thing with like these sorts of conversations is someone's like well unfortunately you'll only be able to get 20 resoles with that construction and it's like you don't need that many like yeah. goodyear what is it it's infinitely resolable is actually something you often hear said about goodyear well construction and like indeed it is do you need infinity resoles you don't like you, you'll as long as your shoe can get resold a couple of times 
a couple of, you, could, you, could be, you could be fine. Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to answer all my, all my questions about it. I feel, I feel very enlightened and I hope it was uh, useful for you guys as well. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Thank you. That was a lot. Thanks. <laughs> thank you.